Labour started the week with a new slogan and hit its soft on crime critics with a policy trilogy. But after a prime ministerial mistake and criticism over a lack of detail, the week ended with that dreaded own goal feeling. A big reveal too that party polling is now in the low 30s and the PM's popularity is slipping. With 11 weeks to go, can Labour revive its campaign? The minister charged with doing just that is Megan Woods. So I began by asking her what the new Labour slogan, In It For You, actually means. Well, I think what it says is exactly what's on the tin, and that's a big part of the point, um, that um, it's very much about who we are as Labour, and it's very much about who Chris is as our Prime Minister and as our leader. Um, he's a, he's a, a man from the hut, I'm not going to call him a boy, right. um, and that... Um, that w understand what it's like out there for ordinary people, much like, you know, I'm the MP for Wigram. I see that people in my own patch are doing it pretty tough. Okay, so he's in it for them, but it's not like the collective call of previous slogans like, let's do this and let's keep moving. It's far more individualistic. It's far more self-centred, really. Oh, look, I, I, I don't read it that way. Um, I see that this is a, about a, a government that's got, the, got people front and centre of what it's doing. That when we make decisions, it's about putting people at the centre of that decision making. I mean, let's do this, and, and that's only, you're only pointing to two campaigns. No, the two previous ones, two and they, previous. they were let's, they were a call to arms, they were inclusive. Yeah, but look, I mean, I think in it for you that people need to know that they, they've got a choice at this election. Of course they do, There's yeah. a government that are going to put people at the centre of decision-making, and that is exactly what the Labour Party is offering. All right, so, so Chris Hipkins is in it for us. He's foreshadowed a practical campaign. Does that mean it's going to be safe? Is it going to be cautious? No Kiwi builds, no nuclear-free moments, no big ideas, no big promises. Safe. Well, of course, all the, all the policy will get released as we go through the campaign. But in terms of the machinery of the campaign, in terms of what that looks like, I mean, this is about finding ways um, in which we can have conversations with New Zealanders about the things that are important but to the, them. But the, the flavour, I mean, practical, the flavour of the campaign. Oh, look, is it going I, to inspire New Zealanders? Oh, look, I mean, what this campaign has to do is give New Zealanders hope. People are doing it really tough out there at the moment. Mm. I think what they see in Chris Hipkins is that um, they, they're reacting positively to him. They see him as a leader yeah. um, that they can put their faith in that actually can give them some hope for the future. And this is very much what this election is going to be about. Yeah, I just want to talk about Labor's performance so far this year. So many ministerial mistakes recently. Stuart Nash, Mecca Fightery, Jan Tanetti, Michael Wood, Kelly Allen. How would you describe Labor's start to the election year? Oh, look, I think um, Chris has been really upfront about that himself. Of course, this is not the conversation that we want to be having. Um, and he's made it pretty clear to us as a caucus as a, and as a cabinet that we have to focus, that we need to be focusing on the things that matter to New Zealanders. And that people are doing it tough yep. and we need to be absolutely laser focused on what the solutions are for, for so that's the policy, people. So that's policy, right? That's policy. Absolutely. Okay. And that is what we are doing. Okay, so let's talk about policy. This week, youth offending and justice. Mm -hmm. Issues the opposition has been hammering for ages. Are you being too slow and too reactive? No, not at all. I don't accept that. Like, I mean, if you, for example, you look at some of the, the the youth justice policies that we've released this week, they're a continuation of work that has been underway for a long period of time. What do we do for those group of kids who we are failing, That's who right. we're not reaching with that? And this is a continuation of that policy. So I wouldn't call it reactive. You wouldn't this, call it slow? No, not at all. All. This would, has got to be something that any responsible government continues to monitor. If you were, and see if what you needs were responsible, maybe you would have done it six months ago or well, 12 months we, ago. We wouldn't have had that evidence around the 77% of kids who are succeeding in okay. the program who are not re offending. But when you do release these policies, you've got mistakes happening, like the, on Monday the Prime Minister had to correct it, and then with the youth facilities, Kelvin Davis didn't have costings or a business case. It feels rushed and it feels like there are mistakes happening. Oh, look, I, I don't... Look, the Prime Minister made a mistake on Monday. I think that um, anyone in the country that can put up their hand and say they've never made a mistake, then let's have a conversation about that. But Chris is more than happy to say, yep, 
I made a mistake. And does that sit well with it, the voters that uh, he's having to uh, say that? Let, let's actually just go back and look what the mistake was about whether it was an aggravating factor in sentencing or whether it was a new offence. The outcome is still the same, that what it's saying is that we're putting in systems in our justice yes, that actually it, yeah, takes us into it's account. It's preferable not to have to do that. Oh, of granted. course it's preferable okay. not to do that, but I think in terms of the um, people saying the business case hadn't been completed, we'd equally be sitting here getting hammered by you, Simon, if all we've done is that we have to we have to wait till we've completed all the business case before we can say that right. this is what we're going to do. Let's talk tax. Huge call by the Prime Minister to rule out capital gains and a wealth tax. I would imagine that bitterly disappoints core Labor supporters, and I wonder why you're prioritising swing national voters over them with this kind of ruling out. Look, I, I don't accept um, that that's what we are doing. That what we're so doing why is do it? so. What we're seeing at the moment is that we cannot do anything that is going to add to inflation. That we've got a series of measures that are in place at the moment um, I that don't see are how about alleviating adds no, to inflation. I'll just, just hear me out in terms of alleviating the cost of living that we know so pressures that we know so many New Zealanders are feeling so when we looked at tax the first thing that we had to rule out was whether or not we were going to do tax cuts such as what the National Party mm. are proposing which will be inflationary so that was my point okay. around that but also the Prime Minister has made a captain's call Prime Ministers yeah. get to do that and, on, and when he's done that has he let down his senior ministers like David Parker and Grant Robertson it seems like they're both openly disappointed and that doesn't present a united front. Oh, well, I don't think you've seen anything but a united front, that you've had two ministers that said, yep, we did some work on it, it's mm. disappointing, but we're team players, um, we'll move on. That's actually what a functional and united team does. Were you disappointed? And that's, and, and that's exactly what we've done. Look, I mean, I think that all of us, and including Chris Hipkins, can look and see um, that the, uh, there is some unfairness in our tax system. Right. But is now the right time to do that? No. It's and not. The Prime so you Minister, agree with the captain's ab call? Absolutely. And the Prime Minister has has made it clear where Labor sits on that and, will, and he's put that out to voters. And will that captain's call drive voters to the Greens who still have this oh, as their policy? That's a question for voters, but okay. I don't think so. That, we're, that Labor will be putting out there to, to New Zealanders a whole series of measures and of why they should that. vote Labor. We're looking, I mean, National's yeah. put out 27 policies, well, so look, we're waiting for Labor. Well, we? I'm waiting for some of the details of <laughs> National's policies. If you're going to criticise <laughs> Calvin Davis for not having a business case um, on a youth justice facility, I'd like to see a bit more probing questioning on some of those National right. Party policies. You're a senior minister, you've got housing, infrastructure, energy, the, and you've just had a major climate announcement with Fonterra about reducing coal emissions. Ideally, those dense portfolios should have a minister of their own. Do you just not have enough talent in the front bench now? Not at all. I think that those portfolios go together incredibly well. If I look at what, I, what I've been able to do, um, holding both the energy and the housing portfolio in terms of the work we're doing around solar panels on our public housing, mm. looking at what we can do to address energy hardship through housing. Yeah, but they're really dense portfolios. Absolutely. They're really dense policies. The energy announcement is another dense look, thing, and, and it needs your full time commitment. Big, big issues. And, and look, I mean, I think that all of those portfolios are portfolios we've, we've made really good gains in as a government. I don't think they have suffered okay. by the fact that I hold multiple portfolios. Right. And are they suffering? Because on top of all that, and, and, and being generous, the campaign's looking tight, isn't it? So, an execution will be critical for mm -hmm. you. So, should you be the campaign chair or should somebody else be focused on that full time? Oh, well, we have a full-time campaign manager. Um, that the so you can do both? Uh, the, campaign, the role of the campaign chair is not a full-time job. It's not to do the operations. The campaign chair is the strategic oversight. Mm. It's about put, uh, making sure that all the, all the bits are in place and that it's going through there. And I think what we've seen from political parties over a number of campaigns now, that this has been, if you're in opposition, a member of caucus or a senior minister um, that has done it. So... Um, um, I, you know, um, I, I know totally I can do it. You can do both. I've done yeah. it before. You I know I can do it. Different I can election do it again. Uh, part of the campaigning is to raise money. Large political donations. So far this year, National has raise, raised 1.6 million dollars. Then comes the Act, Greens, even New Zealand First, and then Labor with about 400 thousand dollars. Your fifth. They're, that's large donations. That's large donations. That's large donations. And Labor, Labor has never 
traditionally collected its donations in the form of large, do large donors. But you do that's raise not, money. I mean, the last election you came we, second. Yes, you know, we do raise money, but not, that's not all through large donations. You're only going through the large donations. A lot of the that's money... That's all that, I can go through at No, the no, but what Labour traditionally gets, mm. and I think if you look back over, over many elections, that you'll see we get a lot of small donations. Mm. Uh, people that put in what they can because they support seeing a Labour government returned. But Simon, I'll point you to the fact that National completely out-fundraised us at the last election. That how much money you raise is not a sign yes. of how well you're going to succeed at the polls. And I think the fact, I think it was nearly twice as much that National raised at the last election. Oh, so 2.8 million to your 1.5 million exactly. at the last election. Exactly. But you're not worried the way, the way that this trend is going with these large no, donations? No, uh, well, in terms of how Labour is yeah. tracking, in terms of our... The our, money coming in. Oh, no, no, I'm, we, we are on track of where we need to be. Of course, we always need to raise more money. As I said, this is nothing new. This is the way Labour parties have raised money for, <laughs> for decades and decades and decades. It does not come in the form of large donations. All right. We all acknowledge it's been a crazy few years, and I wonder whether you fear that no matter what you do, what policies you put out there, voters are tired, and they do associate Labour with the difficult times. It's just that they need a change. Uh, look, I, again, I don't think the polling's suggesting that at all. I think that uh, when people look at Labor, they actually they see a party and a government that has got them through the difficult times as well. There are a large number of people that look at that. I think what we can see if we look at the polling is it is incredibly tight, and it has been all year. But the trend is going no, down. No, it's actually that, yeah. the line of best fit would pretty much be a straight line. There is nothing in this. This is incredibly tight, particularly when you look at the kind of the left versus right blocks and how that is tracking. This is a classic MMP drag race. Um, this is absolutely um, going to come down um, to tens of thousands of votes, probably. Very exciting. Very exciting. Megan Woods, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.